All right, what is up everybody? So today we have another automotive vlog for you. So today we have Enrique, the handy dandy golf buddy, and we have his Lexus IS300 here again. So today we're gonna be doing some brake pads. So we already took the wheel off, we got a jack, we got a jack stand underneath. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at it. What's, what's it doing, Enrique? Uh, making <laughs> loud, obnoxious noises. Kind of like an ex-girlfriend that I don't like. Okay, so... <laughs> So now that we have that, okay, awesome. So what we're gonna do is, I don't know if you can actually see, you may not be able to see here, but you have the brake pads there. They actually look kind of low. So we already know that the uh, brake pads are hitting the wear bars and that's how we know that the brake pads need to be replaced. There is a little bit of a ridge over here on the uh, rotor itself. You could get it machined. You don't have to get it machined. So normally I would like to machine rotors when you start feeling a pulsation on the pedal when you brake because then you know they're warped. You know that's a good sign of warpage right there. Uh, sometimes when they have hot spots, they will also start squeaking a little bit. It seems like there is a little bit of a hot spotting here, but it's not gonna be a big deal. So today we're just gonna do a quick little pad slap. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, so normally you can go and actually within these little holes, I mean, depending on the brake caliper that you have, you can actually put a screwdriver through there, uh, attach it to the rotor, and you can start collapsing the piston that way. In this situation, we can't do that. So we're just gonna do it by the books. We got a little brake caliper tool here, so it'll help us compress the pistons in there so we can get it in. I've got these two loosened up already. These were 12 millimeter bolts, so you have a lower caliper bolt. Put that there, and then you have an upper caliper bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Then we're gonna pop this guy off. There you go. Okay, so you don't want this guy to actually hang down low. It's very heavy, so you don't want to put the stress on the actual rubber hose here. So we're just going to go ahead and sit it up over here on the, uh, the tie rod end, and between the tie rod end and the lower controller. We're going to save these clips here, and then we're going to take out our brake pads. So as you can see right there, you can see how thin that is. So he was definitely in need of uh, brake pads. So one thing that you notice is that the, so it was on the, like this, so the bottom portion of this is actually ha has more life left than the top. So the reason that happens is because you have uneven piston pressure. So over here you have two different pistons. So these are compressing at two different rates. So this one up top has to be compressing at a faster rate in order for that to happen. Right, it doesn't look too dramatically bad, so it's nothing to really be worried about. But if you do notice that going bad on your car, then you might wanna go ahead and maybe get a rebuild kit, uh, recheck them just to see what why they're binding. Okay, so we got that off. We're gonna leave this caliper on here well, actually, let's see if we can see it. Normally, so right here. So if you look at the rotor right here, it'll tell you your minimum machine thickness. So right here, it says min TH and it says 30 millimeters. So we would have to check from, with the dial copper, this end of the rotor to this end of the rotor. And it would have to be less than 30 uh, millimeters there. Uh, or if it's less than 30 millimeters, you would discard the rotor and get a new one. If it's over 30 milliliters, millimeters, then you're totally allowed to machine it, take it to a machine shop, and they'll do it for you, and everything's fine. Sweet. So we got these off. We're going to keep these springs because our new set did not come with them, and now we're going to install the new pads. All right, so another symptom that may, that may also cause uneven brake wear would be these slide pins right here. So these are located on the top and bottom of your caliper bracket. You just remove them. You lube them right back up and then you put them back in place. So the reason these will cause uneven wear is because sometimes they'll get jammed up and they won't allow for the brake uh, caliper to come in evenly. So we lubed it, there's one. I'm gonna take the second one out right here. Okay, that one's looking a little dry. All this is is just anisees. There we go, you can use grease too, that's fine. There we go, so now they're sliding in and out perfectly. We're just gonna wiggle them. Okay, so that portion is complete. Now what we're gonna do is we have to bring in this caliper here. So we're gonna use an old brake pad. We're gonna bring the pistons in. Oh, let me get that pad in there. Okay, it's still not in there. Okay, Oops. We're gonna use an old brake pad. And the reason we're gonna use an old brake pad is because we're gonna put wear marks on this thing. Off from the tool, uh oh, that's not gonna work. This is only for a single piston and we got a double piston. So let's try to just bring it in this way. One side at a time. So we're just gonna work it back and forth until they both go in there. And you don't wanna work too much at a time, especially because you don't want, as one side's coming in, the other one's gonna be tr 
trying to come out, so it'll make the piston go in unevenly, and it'll cause them to seize right away. Okay, we're gonna come back to this side. There we go. So those are both seated in there now. So now let's go ahead and grab our pad. One of our clips fell off here. Might not be able to see that with the camera. That's fine. We'll just put the clip in. Put the brake, new brake pad in. Okay, that's in there. Once that's in there, go ahead and slide your caliper back in. Make sure you push these bolts in there. Right, so the caliper seats, we're gonna grab our two bolts. There's one. There's two. We're gonna grab our 12 millimeter, or our ratchet with our 12 millimeter on it. Okay, the hose is not letting me put it in there. And then we're just gonna tighten it back up. There you go, that's it. That's how you do the front side. Now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish up the other side and then we're gonna continue on and we're gonna do the rears. So those are done. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of the excess grease and good to go. That's how you do the front brakes right there. All right, how's it going? How you doing? doing good. All right, so we got the rear caliper here. So this has a cotter pin on it. These are the brake pads here. So we are able to collapse one piston in here. I uh, use the screwdriver method. So this has a cotter pin. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab a set of pliers, pull the cotter pin out of the hole. This is what it looks like. We're gonna pull the pin. Oh, make sure the brake pads are on their way. And then your pads come out. So you need a special type of piston compressing tool. As you can see, you have one piston there one piston here. So what we're gonna try and do is grab a set of channel locks, try to compress this one in. Okay, there we go. Try to compress this side back in because it did come out a little bit. So we're gonna be playing a little bit of a back and forth here, but there we go. And as you can see, both pistons now are seated inside the socket. So now what we gotta do is we gotta grab our new pads. Right, joke's on me I guess. There we go, there's one new pad. Now we're gonna grab our second new pad. There we go, and you wanna make sure they're, they're faced the right way and the reason you can know is because these little ears right here. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pin again. Stick it through the hole. What'd I do with that cotter pin? Oh, dang it. No, never mind. <laughs> That'll be the second time I lose a clip on your car. Rotate it this way. We're gonna grab the pointer then here. Stick it in. So it looks like your pin's actually bent a little bit. It's not too big a deal. We rotate this guy. Finish sticking the cotter pin in. I'm just gonna grab the pliers. Still didn't go all the way in. I'm gonna grab the pliers and we're gonna push it in. No, doesn't wanna see it my way. Okay, the other way is grab the pointed end, see if we can grab with these pliers. Well, I guess it's in. Okay, so that's in. So as long as you have this little detent right here on this side, it's not gonna expand and go out. So the next thing, we're gonna spread these back apart. We're gonna slide it over the rotor. Okay, we're gonna grab our two 14 millimeter bolts. We're gonna come back here, and then we're just gonna bolt it right back up. So there's one, there's two. This one did not have those, uh, those slide bolts for the slide pins, so we didn't have to lube any of those up. This caliper just 
bolts directly up to the brake and the pads are just held by this rod here. Missing that other one, huh? No, it doesn't have one. So as you can oh. see, there's no hole up top. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's just because these are interchangeable side to side. Gotcha. Okay, gonna make sure that's on there. I'm gonna grab our handy dandy 17 millimeters, a 17 millimeter. Okay. Let's really tighten that up. All right, that is it for us for the day. So I did find out when I did the second side in the rear, later buddy, second side in the rear, the caliper doesn't even have to come off. You can just pull the pin with the pads in there. I use a screwdriver to collapse the uh, uh, pistons in there and boom, good to go. You can hear it, huh? Pump your brakes, yep. Pump your brakes and get the heck out of here. <laughs> yep, anytime. All right guys, it's been another vid uh, great video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, let me know. So until then, you know, remember go out there, have fun, enjoy whatever it is you do. See you guys in another video. Peace.